Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's all about energy resources, and we're going to learn that society gets a lot of its energy from a range of sources, and as the world gets richer, the demand for energy goes up. Different energy sources have advantages and disadvantages, and society makes different choices about what they use based on a lot of things, political, economic, even cultural. So, let's first start with what is energy? Well, energy is what we use to do our work. It powers our machines, cooks our food, warms our bodies. Um, energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can change form. So it can change from kinetic energy to mechanical energy to electrical energy, okay? And when we talk about where energy came from, it all comes from this guy, the sun. At one point or another, it may not be directly right now from the sun, but a million years ago, that energy that's been stored is from the sun. And so, some of this energy we're talking about, what do we use? Well, 37% of what we use right now comes from oil, 25% from coal, 23% from natural gas, okay? There's a little bit from nuclear, there's a little bit from renewable that we'll talk about, but we take all this energy that was done during photosynthesis, and it dies, it's turned into biomass, it dies, it's compressed, and over time it turns to our fossil fuels, okay? They take a long time to replenish, so we, matter of fact, too long, millions of years, so we don't call them renewable, okay? 6% um, of our current power comes from nuclear power, but that uranium that does that is also not renewable. So only 14% is renewable. What do we use this for? We gotta use it to run all our machinery, heat our food, uh, heat our houses, um, drive our cars, a ton of stuff. So given the amount of energy we use, how much longer do we have for fossil fuels? Well, it depends on how many new sources we find, how fast we find the resources, and how efficient we are. But the best projections are 50 years for oil, uh, 250 years for coal, and about 70 for natural gas. Um, it seems clear that humans' energy need for energy is going up, not down, and this is due because population is getting bigger, not, uh, not less, and also each person is using more. So we got a lot of different sources here. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, coal is a fossilized plant material and we got to mine it to get it. It's used by burning it directly for heat or to cook food, but mainly it's used in power plants. We uh, burn it to heat water to turn turbines. The advantage is it's, it's uh, easy to use. You don't have to change it much. It's plentiful, um, but the disadvantage are it emits a lot of greenhouse gases more than anything. It causes acid rain. It causes smog, it degrades the environment when it's mined, and it's really not that efficient of a fuel source. Even though there's a lot of it and it's cheap, it's not easy, it's not a good fuel source. So oil, well, what's that? Well, it's basically a liquid form, of and we use that liquid form for a lot of things. Gasoline, jet fuel, even asphalt creation. Um, the advantages are there's a lot of energy for its mass, and once we find it, it's cheap to get out. But disadvantages, there's a really limited supply. It adds a lot of carbon to the atmosphere, and we're running out of it quickly. So uh, natural gas, well, what is that? So we've got a solid form, a liquid form. Now here's our gas form. This is basically methane and other gases trapped between layers of rock. And this is microorganisms that produced this biogas uh, bio years ago, but now it's trapped in the ground, like millions of years ago. So how do we get it? Well, we, we pipe it out, just like a, a well. We dig down and pipe it out. What's the advantage of it? Of all the fossil fuels, it's the cleanest, it's the cheapest to extract, um, it's easy to transport, and it's used for a lot of stuff. Disadvantages is it's still a carbon emitter, okay, but not as much as coal. Nuclear fusion, fission, I'm sorry, it's when atoms are pulled apart, electricity, or not electricity, energy is released big time, and when this is released, uh, it heats water, and that water turns a turbine. The advantages are that once you build it, it's not very expensive to run it, and it doesn't release a lot of toxic things to the atmosphere. Disadvantages, toxic waste. The, the actual resulting atoms from the split still have to be accounted for, and it takes a thousand years before they're not radioactive. So what do we do? This is hydroelectric. Hydroelectric is a dam. You take a river, you dam it up, but inside the dam is a channel for water to go through. It turns a turbine. That turbine joins, uh, generates electricity. So the advantage is that in, in addition to the cheap electricity, once it's built, you've got a reservoir to use for boating or skiing or fishing. But the disadvantage is it can really mess up an environment and it can mess with fl natural flooding cycles. Uh, so now we're looking at biogas. Well, biogas is sort of like methane, but on a soon, like a right now, immediate scale. Basically, uh, plants and animals are put into a tank that doesn't have any oxygen, microorganisms eat it, 
but they don't have oxygen, so the byproduct is methane. That methane's tra uh, used to generate gas to cook and heat with. Okay, wood is uh, just what you would think it is: trees or other types of plants, or even dried uh, manure from cows, and we use it to burn it uh, for heat, light, and cooking fuel. Think campfire. And that's basically it. it's a very simple form. The funny thing is, if you notice. This wood is sort of like coal, the biogas is like natural gas, and we'll go there. All right, so solar. Now we're really getting to our alternative stuff. Solar is when light hits a solar panel, convert to electricity. That electricity is used for all sorts of stuff. Uh, so these panels generate electricity. The problem is, is that if there's no sunlight, there's no electricity. What happens at night? You have to have a way to store the extra electricity. This contraption doesn't turn to electricity, instead it heats water for the house, or oil to heat the house. And this is a big field that allows it to collect for a whole city. Uh, so wind is another big one. Well, the uh, deal with wind is it causes the blades of the wind turbine to turn, and that turns a generator, which generates electricity. Anywhere the wind blows, you can put one of these up. Most often we put them in the plains states, as well as offshore the ocean. Um, they're not too complicated inside, so they don't take too much maintenance, but they are expensive to set up, very expensive to set up this field. Once it's set up, though, the energy is fairly inexpensive. Um, and the negative of it, in a nutshell, is that it interrupts uh, bird paths, it's noisy, and it's expensive to build. So this title is when a dam is set up in front of an estuary, water comes in and turns a turbine, and during high tide it comes in, and during low tide it goes out, and that generates electricity. But it, a lot of times it doesn't let the sewage and stuff get out of the estuary, so that causes problems. The uh, wave is like tidal, but instead of it going through a little thing, it actually kind of gets pushed up against these turbines that are floating like this. And uh, they can come from both directions. And these things can be used for bridges and so forth, but they, again, they're expensive and they can't go just anywhere. It's got to be just right. Geothermal is when we pump cold water down to the ground and the volcanic activity below the ground heats that water into steam. It comes up this red line, Tur the steam turns the turbines, release the atmosphere. It can also release gases that are trapped in the ground that are not good for the environment out, but otherwise it's an infinite supply of energy. So uh, what are some other sources here? Well, hydrogen is kind of the one of the future, and there's two ways they look at it. One, they look at it as a fuel directly, um, like putting it in cars that are designed to take hydrogen and convert them to electricity and run your car. There's problems with that. There's no infrastructure set up for it. It's, it's uh, flammable, it's hard to transport, and it's not super reliable technology. The other thing is, what if you took two hydrogen atoms and stuck them together? So fusion instead of fission, it releases a huge amount of energy. The problem with that is that it right now, no one's able, been able to do it without taking more energy to do it than what it allows for. So they're still working on that. So why don't we all just use these renewable energy sources we're talking about? Well, there's really five reasons. One, our infrastructure right now is just set up to use carbon. Gasoline, oil, coal, that's what everything is set up to run on. And if we change everything, super expensive, super time consuming. It's cheap, because of that, it's cheaper to produce electricity if you, from fossil fuels, if you ignore the health and the environmental cost, okay? Um, you know, a lot of these sources aren't reliable, not available everywhere, and we've got to use them to run all this stuff that we are so dependent on. So this is the problem right now. Okay, so now you see the problem. Now you see some of the advantages and disadvantages. I would make sure you go back and have a list of those. You need to know those, as well as reasons we don't use this, okay? If you have questions about how society gets its range of energy sources, uh, why we're going to need more so energy in the future, what are the advantages and disadvantages, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful, and peace out, homie. Ocelot.